huge things. Massive things. World-altering things happening here, folks. Hi, Internet. Steve the Cosmere not. This is Raffo. We made it! The final part of the longest book in the Stormlight Archive. So far. Spoilers for everything else. If you haven't read the rest of the Cosmere, and really, if you haven't read Rhythm of War, I invite you to examine your life choices that brought you to this video. Part 5. These epigraphs are from the musings of L on the first of the final ten days. Again, terrified for wind and truth. Dalinar walks a battlefield and sees arrows fletched with goose feathers from the Horn Eaters. Do they have geese, or are those from off-world? Why aren't they just chicken feathers? Sigzil brings in Stargile, a light weaver with a soldier's build and a ready smile. Yeah, okay. He paints Stormlight in the air, which is really cool. Basically, like, digital art. Ishar is ruling Tukar, which is actually named after Talm. He makes a frosty glyph in Stargile's recording. We've only seen Kaladin do that before, and only when he leveled up. No, Lopin did it too. Yasna's ready to else call now. Her paranoia shows her main character-ness. Vin, Wax, Cal to a certain extent. Everybody stays away from windows and sits where they can watch all the exits. Yasna and Wit's relationship is fascinating. This is the scene where we most clearly see she's ace, but also where we see the most humanity and vulnerability from Hoyd. The Alethi hadn't existed when he'd been born. The phrase used here is very reminiscent of what Tolkien said in response to German publishers' inquiries to whether or not he was Jewish. He tells a story about a gambler, specifically an Awakener from Nalthus. Race had been trapped on Roshar for about 7,000 years, so another thousand would be fine. Does a soulless star slumbers actually mean anything? Odium's one great failing is he thinks he's smarter than he is. The contest won't be about who can stab hardest with their spear, it will be about people's hearts. Presumably hearts that don't have spears in them. He will have to abide by those terms, as they are part of the promise Race made by taking up the Shard of Odium. To fail that promise would give others an opening against him, and said failures have killed gods before. Before. Also, Hoyd talks about refusing the power others all took, and by so doing, gaining freedom they can never have. Still seems pretty bound by that whole darn shard issue, though. When I was scripting this, it auto-corrected to darn shard, and I feel like that's appropriate. Chapter 100 is titled Watchers at the Rim, a reference to Dalinar's Starfall's vision in Way of Kings. Every pasture needs three things, the woman said, voice changing as if she were quoting from memory. Flocks to grow, herdsmen to tend, and watchers at the rim. Dalinar gives Yasna a copy of Oathbringer. First, he's quoting Way of Kings at everyone, and now he's giving out copies of the Stormlight Archive. Same, bro. Moash kills Fendorana. We last saw a Spren be stabbed by Kaladin in Oathbringer. And then... Teft. The shield around the sibling falls, and Raboniel sends for the Word of Deeds and the Night Known, other fused, presumably to complete the unmaking of the sibling. Then things get weird. Cal's eyes glow yellowish red, otherwise known as orange. He moves faster than Venli can track, and sucks the pursuer... Sorry, the defeated one's head to the floor with a basic lashing that doesn't glow as much as it should. Void binding? Or maybe it's just a reverse lashing which uses less stormlight? I don't know. Chasing a heavenly one up to the top of the tower? Bye bye, Navani's impromptu lashing device. Syl starts to lose herself, which makes sense because he's pretty far gone. Then he jumps. Moash is a lying liar face? Elokar didn't beg at the end. I love Raboniel. The Stormfather refers to Kaladin as the son of Tanavast again. Dalinar rides the storm again, in the place where the Stormfather gives visions. He feels a warmth from, and I use this word very specifically, beyond. Sure is nice that he's a bondsmith. A vision of the day Tien died. And Tien is surprisingly aware of what's going on. Lots of spiritual shenanigans happening here, as guided by capital C Connection. He tells Cal to see the colors. Budding Lightweaver indeed. Coming out of the vision, he pulls Sil on, then hears Tien, then Teft, and finally says what he couldn't say at the end of Oathbringer. It's Dalinar, not the Stormfather, who says these words are accepted. Windspren form Windrunner Plate. Lesh we lived before the war, when Honor was first the god of the singers. She would know why the Spren initially abandoned them. 
She was friends with an honor friend named Rhea. Sounds a lot like Rua, eh, Nako? Also, she hums to one of the old rhythms, which she shouldn't be able to do. Navani sings the tone of anti-void light. All it took was intent. Tower light, honor and cultivation, the song of science itself. The sibling was created to be the common ground between humans and Spren. Journey before destination, you bastard. Cal's brands finally heal. He no longer sees himself as a slave, as not good enough. We fill the cracks with something stronger. Aiden gets a taste of wearing Windrunner plate, which flits through the battle doing a protect. According to Ash, Ishar was the one who discovered perpendicularities and Shadesmar, leading humans off Ashen. Well, yeah, he was the Bondsmith. Too bad he's now, claiming he's Aidenalsium born again, waiting to fight Odium's champion, and he's got the Bondsmith Honor Blade, Zeth's father's sword? Relaine gets his enlightened mist spren. Also, Bridger of Mines and Son of Thorns? That's cool. Ishar skeps his blade, which is a significant thing from the way of King's Prime. He's a bondsmith unchained, unothed, and golly he can do wacky things. Taking Dalinar's bond to the Stormfather as well as his connection to Odium. Then a bunch of stuff about the Shin gets dropped. They knew the Heralds were alive, but weren't planning on giving back their honor blades. They have apparently accepted the unmade as gods. Is that where Ba'ado Mishram ended up? And Zeth's dad, Naturo, is dead. Also, Nightblood freaking chips Ishar's honor blade. What would happen if you just... Ishar gets lucid for a bit. Everyone sees more clearly when a Radiant touches the spiritual realm. He tells Dalinar to come to him in Shinovar, that he can reset the Oath Pact. Navani mind melds with the sibling and turns on the tower. The sibling's body is the tower, manifested as crystal and metal to create fabrials. Could they manifest as different types of metals then? Yeah, absolutely. Soulcasters. To explain the craziness Ishar was doing, the Stormfather says, The powers of a bondsmith are the powers of creation. The powers of gods, including the ability to link souls. With honor out of the picture, there's no one holding those powers back. Stormy remembers Ishar from back when he was a little breeze. Odium first tricked Ishar into experimenting with surges. Who was the human that made the Stormfather laugh? Give us these stories, Brandon! Nightblood talks to Dalinar, which is fun. Zeth says, Ishar knew something he should not have known. Huh? Regardless, he was definitely doing something he should not have been doing, somehow pulling Spren directly into the physical realm. And we get our first fully blind character. I'm sure there'll be more from him in the next book. Odium name drops Sephandrius, saying he could have been a god. If Dalinar breaks the contract, Odium is free from Honor's restrictions. If Odium breaks the contract, it would make a hole in his soul and allow Cultivation to kill him. Is that how he killed the other shards? Somehow causing them to act contrary to their intent? Breaking oaths somehow? A willing champion from each of us, and a fight to the death. Super nervous for the next book. Odium wants to use Roshar to train soldiers for what sounds like conquering the rest of the Cosmere. Then he offers, if he wins, he'll leave Roshar out of it, at least for a thousand years. Just let him run rampant everywhere else. It'll be fine. The true war will begin when other shards discover the strength of surge binding. Huh? Final offer. If Odium loses, he leaves and gives up Alethkar and Herdaz. If he wins, he gets Dalinar as a fused. You will be the one I send to the stars to serve my interests in the Cosmere. Contest is in 10 days. What's the timetable for Wind and Truth? Is this going to be at the end of the book or at the end of part one? Teravangian is as stupid today as he was smart on the day he created the diagram. The pendulum swung all the way to the other end. Zeth comes and kills Teravangian. Who knew about Zeth's father? At that moment, Odium comes for a visit, and Nightblood manifests in the vision place between realms. Stab! Drink up, buddy! On this, his dumbest, most emotional of days, he was perfect for Odium. So, he ascends. Bye, race. Hello, Todium. Teravodium. Vargodium? Officially the fourth person we've seen attain Shardhood. When I first read this, I thought it was an improvement. The more I thought about it, though, the more worried I became. Now I'm terrified. 
Relaine Spren, named Toomey, just learned the rhythm of war, and he's apparently the first enlightened Spren to know it. Leshwi and the rest of the singers who fought to protect the Radiance make like the original listeners and Switzerland. I'm tired of this. From now on, I'm Switzerland, okay? Plate is always there, but only manifests when needed. Relaine stays at Eurythiru, and not just to wait for his boyfriend, also to make sure no one commits genocide. Because whatever way you look at it, genocide is bad. This shouldn't be new information. In this new role, Teravangian had two sides. Sounds like he still has capacity from cultivation. The body that drops next to Zeth is actually from Ray's. It's interesting to see the pull of the Shard's intent during these paragraphs. He meets cultivation on the shore of infinity. She had another shape as well, one deeper and truer than the others, cause she's a dragon! She hoped she changed him into someone who could bear this power with honor. Seems like a specific choice of words. Then there's a series of paragraphs that go from optimistic to terrifying. Hey, I saved Carbranth. I could totally save Roshar. Maybe I could save the whole Cosmere, cause it's a mess out there. That's what Raz was working for. What a dummy. He missed a bunch of stuff in his plans, like exactly how to beat Dalinar, which I totally could do. <laughs> Shallan cracked open her cell phone to find the Sion with the Aeon Ale, which means beauty or handsomeness. Shallan's going to find Ba Otto Mishram before the Ghost Bloods. Wit calls Thydekar the Lord of Scars. Honestly, probably connection translating the survivor more conceptually. He threatens to come slap Kel around again, a direct reference to secret history. Now they are at war. Kellek described a star chart for Shallan, and she wants to visit everywhere. Which is exactly why I thought it was Shallan at first in Lost Metal. Venli makes it to the listeners, who have a guardian chasm fiend. Her mother becomes the second will shaper, and Venli's next ideal is accepted by cultivation. Kaladin officially chooses to be a therapist, but Dalinar has to send him on a buddy cop journey with Zeth first. Lyft found Wit's flute, which Dabid knew from the bridge cruise. Genuinely wonder what he's going to do with it. She's got her AVR back, or rather, Gera the Ferru Chemist's AVR. Mr. DeFito wakes up with L. Not like that. L's been writing the epigraphs in this part. A singer with no rhythms who rips out his carapace and replaces it with bits of metal. What type of metal? L was the original Vyre, he who quiets. And now that's three fused killed by anti-void light. Cal goes to the merchant where Lyft found the flute. He retrieves Rock's razor, some of Sigzel's brush pens, and the carved wooden horse from Tien that he lost in a different country. I have suspicions about that merchant. Apparently the Stormfather and Nightwatcher's bondsmith shacked up before, but never the siblings. Dalinar worries he left Odium too much leeway. Ten days can be a long time. I worry too. Eshenai struggles to survive the dual storm in the chasms. She thinks a modified first ideal, experiences her shard blade scream, and hears the rhythm of war. She was highly invested, radiant, as she died. The Stormfather accepted her mental ideal. He lets her ride the storm, see the rest of the continent, everything she ever dreamed, and then fades away to explore a new realm, that undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns. Epilogue! Wit's playing with coins looking for Odium. I wonder where from. Hoyd realizes a way Odium could escape, and Totium manipulates his breath in which his memories are stored. Hoyd's scared, and we should be too. His perfect pitch is off afterward, proof of breath tampering. He dropped down a heightening. Ars Arcanum. Still no idea about void binding. It's not what the fused do, they still surge bind only with one. Is it what Renarin and therefore Relaine do? If so, why would the old magic be its cousin? Also, who is Chris writing to? She thinks they'll find the relevance of color to gemstone use intriguing, particularly in relation to other magic systems. She talks about mechanical investiture access, soul casters, honor blades, and what's happening on Scadrial. Medallions, the allomancy grenades, all the things. Specific section on stone shaping, which is similar to the Yolish microkinesis, albeit less explosive. Bounded by honor to prevent the mistakes that happened on Yolan? Honor's gone now. Stone shaping is probably the best example of the use of intent in using investiture. Chris sent Nas to embed among the stone wards, and surprisingly he was able to get a lot of information. How? 
She's heard of Navani's creation of anti-investiture, created by intent, which supports her theories over foil deep within his ocean. Who is he? Well, he's trying to master the Aethers, so there's a significant hint. And that's Rhythm of War. Woo! And with that, the Cosmere Connection series is complete for now. Thanks for sticking around through five separate videos. This was a beefy book to take notes on. Thank you also to my patrons, without whom I could not have dedicated the time necessary to make all those annotations. Specific shoutouts to Doug, Matt, Steve, Data Gremlin, Alec, Craig, Scotty, James, Dalinar's Butt, Moochie, and Chris. Next week, I'll finally be getting to another long-neglected video, my review of the Doctor Who Commander decks in Magic the Gathering. The Doctor is in the Cosmere, so it's related. If you want to see my proof of that, click here to watch and find out. Plate is always there, but on come on! Done and done.